Good morning. On behalf of the administration, staff, and students of Loma Linda Academy, welcome. I would much rather be able to say welcome home, but due to our new reality, we had to conduct homecoming virtually this year. This past 12 months have been an interesting journey filled with many twists and turns. Just three weeks after last year's homecoming weekend, we transitioned to off-campus education while we all learned to do school through remote learning. Over the last year, we have put great effort into making sure that we meet all county, state, and CDC guidelines for the safety of our students, teachers, and staff. At the same time, alumni of LLA can take pride that we have done all this while holding true to the mission of your alma mater. In all circumstances, it remains our desire and mission that all grow in God's grace, thrive intellectually, develop true friendships, embrace healthful living. In short, we want to do school God's way. As you gather virtually this weekend and share stories of happy school days where you learn to stand for truth, we know that some of those stories will be sad. And some of those sad stories will be because of how administration or faculty treated you. If that is true of you, please hear me. On behalf of the current principals and faculty, as well as those who preceded us, I want to say I am sorry. Sometimes we just did it wrong. Maybe we, we did the right thing the wrong way, or maybe we were just wrong. In any case, I'm sorry and I hope you will forgive. Maybe we can start again. Not your education, of course, but at least our relationship. Tell us your story if you'd like. That way we can learn and grow. Whatever reason brings you here this morning, we are so grateful you have taken the time to join us for this virtual event. Despite this temporary alternative, we hope that you find ways to reconnect, reminisce, and celebrate. Celebrate friendships that were born here at LLA. For more information on our Zoom room schedule, our virtual campus tour, and full-length videos featured in today's service, please visit our website at www.lla.org forward slash alumni. And Lord willing, we look forward to welcoming you back on campus at next year's Alumni Weekend. My role will be quite different as by then I will have begun my retirement as of July 1. Yvette Valenzuela will be welcoming you as the head of schools and I, well, I'll just enjoy hanging around in the back, catching up on the latest news from all of you. Until then, we want you to know that we are, we love you. We appreciate you. We welcome you today as forever members of the Loma Linda Academy family. So one of the things that I, I had a passion to do is to bring back the school song. And so when I became an administrator, I kind of looked back and tried to figure out what was the school song. The school song was written by a woman named Freddie Crosby, and I believe it was from the class of 1955. Um, and I, from what I understand from alumni gatherings, it was sung at the school for some years. So the music teacher, Mrs. Jimenez, and I sat down together one day before school started and tried to re-adapt it a little bit to make it a little easier to sing for this generation of kids. And um, we did it. We started singing it every week in our chapels or our assemblies. And it's a tradition that carries on to this day, even through Zoom, when we have um, virtual learning and we can't actually be singing together anywhere, even in the classroom kids will record themselves singing the school song at home and um, everyone knows it. Sing of happy school days where we learn to stand for truth where we train new character in the early days of youth Oh Melinda Academy We pledge our honor to We will fly our colors loyally Long remember you. Pardon, you died in a
some of my former classmates. So for example, Tom Quishenberry and Robert Skortz were the year behind me. Sue Peterson, uh, Dr. Herman, Dr. Sandiford were all here when I was here. And yet teachers like Mr. Herman and Miss Lewis were uh, students that I actually taught and had in the classroom. So it's just kind of nice to see that we all really love Loma Linda Academy and love it so much that we decide to come back and to support it and enjoy it. And I've often thought to myself, you know, as an alumni, once you come back to Loma Linda Academy to teach, you know, where else are you gonna go? It's the best, so you have to just stay <laughs> for many, many, many years. <laughs> Dr. Herman, um, who was our principal, yep. uh, first got my job. I had just gotten my driver's license. We had to be up at school at five o'clock in the morning to go to Leone Meadows. And apparently I slept through my alarm. And so I remember my father coming into my room and waking me up saying, Doug Herman is on the phone asking <laughs> where you are. But I was so scared to come work here and see him because I was like, that's what he's gonna remember. <laughs> Turns out he doesn't remember except for the fact that I told him that story. But I was like, I have to always be on time for Doug Herman because otherwise he's gonna remember that I'm the late one. So during my senior year, we transitioned from France Hall to um, the new Student Services Building. And I remember when we transitioned, you know, missing that space, that auditorium especially. I remember one year we put the, uh, that famous maze that they did uh, during the fair, I think. Um, just a crazy, super unsafe time. <laughs> the, the smell of the library in there. I don't know, there's something nostalgic about that. And the ramp, of course, going down um, to the locker dungeons. Some of the traditions, I think, are still there. Um, whenever, whenever their class is mentioned, cheering and screaming, and all the classes do that, that's always been a tradition, but uh, for the seniors especially. But I remember Sue Peterson, I don't know what we did to her, but she tried to get us back, and so she opened up our PE lockers and got all our clothes all wet, and so the next day, she's like, you guys better dress down. <laughs> and then, you know, Dan Peterson was um, our football coach, and I just remember if he ever pulled me out, I would just stand really nice next to him and just yell really, really loud. And then he finally say, okay, fine, go back in. <laughs> I was Pastor Mark's um, TA when I was a freshman. And he always said such nice things about me as his worker, but I, I think I was a terrible worker. I, I was such a slow, I still am such a slow grader and such a meticulous person for detail. And he had me grading memory verse quizzes. It was probably a nightmare for him. I would, I would take like, a whole hour just to grade one class's <laughs> memory first quizzes. Every single word, you know, that they had to wrong or right. <laughs> he was very gracious with me. I remember going, uh, I think it was my first or second band tour. We were heading up to Northern California and Phil Binkley had us all stop at one of his favorite places, uh, which is Superior Dairy in Hanford. And they have some of the best homemade ice cream and they also sell food as well. And he said, all right, everybody you can order them whatever you can eat. And uh, there happened to be a table of about five of my friends. I was not at that table. I want to put that down for the record. Um, and I think they ordered about everything on the menu. They had milkshakes, they had fries, they had sandwiches, they had, and it was just a loaded table. And I remember the face of Mr. Binkley when he walked by and looked over at that table and him telling them they better finish everything that they had on that table. And I think oftentimes our students will go to other places and then when they come back, they're like, oh wow, I didn't know how good I had it here at Loma Linda. Having Zoom choir has been a unique challenge at the beginning of this year. Um, uh, never actually getting to have the kids hear each other in the try and trying to learn music in that process has been very exciting. So I'm really proud of the kids and all the hard work and perseverance that they have shown in order to do this. And then I kind of glom all the individual recordings together and made a virtual choir recording um, that you're going to get to hear. So uh, we chose the song Oceans just because it talks about God calling us sometimes into difficult circumstances and how, yes, the circumstances might be, be difficult, but in those deeper waters where there's more fear and more anxiousness, that's where God's grace can truly abound. So I pray that that has been our experience, that we have all been able to grow closer and learn to trust God more through these difficult times.
the great unknown where feet may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I
Welcome alumni, I'm Sue Peterson. I've been here 44 years. I'm gonna take you on a little tour of our campus. Come along. To the left here used to be a maintenance department and we had a gymnastics room. It was huge, the kids did gymnastics for years. We had a gymnastics team that traveled. Fun, fun memories. This is what we call Oak Grove and it is where we're holding our hosting our graduations we also have this beautiful senior circle uh, donated by the class of 2017. we are here at the industrial arts complex home of the Thai program In the front of Oak Grove, where we hold our graduations, they have completely remodeled this area where the seniors can sit, and it has this great sign of Loma Linda Academy on it. It's just a beautiful spot for our graduations. We wish that you could be here in person, but since you can't, you probably recognize at least what this place looks like. Although we did get a little update with some new paint and new carpet recently. But I can assure you from some of the alumni who've come back, they go, it still smells the same. So the choir room smell is safely preserved. We have noontime activities here. It's uh, comforting to see the kids using this space. It takes a little bit of the pain away from that building having to be removed. We are here with Mary Jean Shelton in the third grade classroom. Mary Jean has been on our campus for 43 years. This is finishing 43. She's gonna tell us a little bit about it. Hi, come on into my classroom. Uh, things are very different to this year. Um, we have our partitions to, for our children to protect them from COVID. But I remember when we moved here, we had to transfer the library. So we put our children all in line. They were handed a stack of books by one person and then the librarian met them here on the other side. They walked across and they handed it to the librarian and she put it on the shelf. So she just didn't have those piles and piles of books. The kids loved it and it actually worked out very, very well. Greetings fellow alumni of Loma Linda Academy. My name is Brett Walls. I'm one of the class officers of the 30 year honor class of 1991. I'm also a proud parent of three student boys here, a senior, a sophomore, and an eighth grader. I'm proud of you boys, and I love you. The face of our school has changed a lot in the 30 years since I attended here. The face of many of our teachers have changed as well. Although I'm thinking about you, Sue Peterson, John Hall, Andy Sandiford, Phil Binkley, and school headmaster, Doug Herman. While the faces have changed, several things have not. The deep commitment to Christ-focused, Seventh-day Adventist education is unwavering. Another component that hasn't changed are the costs of education. Tuition alone does not cover the costs. Substantial support comes from constituent churches, but it alone also does not cover the costs. The school relies on you and the school relies on me. 
to help provide additional support to close that gap. 191 students received support from Rolanda Academy this year. That didn't happen by accident. It happened because of you and me. So if you would, think about what gift you might be able to offer today. And if something you wanted to think about after Sabbath, fantastic. But if you're thinking about it, why don't you pull out your device and let's at least understand the ways that we might be able to give. I'm gonna to go to, oh no, I'm actually asking you to pull your device out. Let's do this together, okay. Go ahead, un unlock it with me. All right, we're there together. Go to your web browser, type in lla.org slash give, lla.org slash G-I-V-E. That's gonna redirect you to the giving page at La Melinda Academy. And if you start to scroll down there, you'll start to see the different types of options available to you for equal and support. The first one that pops up is a $10 option. Fantastic, if you're able to offer $10, that is amazing. You are changing the life of a student at La Melinda Academy. But let's maybe also put it in perspective. $10, venti Starbucks with a fancy new oat milk plus a couple of their caffeine shots. Let's put it in perspective. You're already awake. Skip it. Let's send the money to La Melinda Academy to help students. Other options, $25, $100, $1,000. There's an other box right next to that as well. If you select that other box, you can put a number and a lot of zeros behind that. Please do whatever is inspiring to you to help. There are other methods. If you're thinking old school checks, that might be a way to support as well. You're correct. Loma Linda Academy, write that out to Loma Linda Academy. Again, that box there lets you put a lot of zeros in that, that check box. Make it out to donation, drop it in the mail. Loma Linda Academy, 10656 Anderson Street, Loma Linda, California, 92354. The same address as when you and I went to school here. If you'd prefer to offer a donation by phone, 909-796-0161, extension 3340. Please call during normal business hours. Someone will be glad to help you. If you're thinking, I wanna try it a different way. I saw a pigeon land a couple of minutes ago. I think it was a carrier pigeon. The business office will take carrier pigeon donations. Of this, I can guarantee you. Please find whatever bit of support you can in your heart. Thank you for being one of the most amazing parts of Loma Linda Academy. Thank you for your time today. God bless you and happy Sabbath.
I'll be reading from Romans 12 too. This can be found in the New International Version. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve that God's will is His good and pleasing and perfect will. Good morning, classmates. It's nice to be with you. Let us pray. Jesus, Lord of all creation, thank you. Thank you for choosing to be our creator. Thank you for being the creator whose love for us never changes. We have seen your love with our own eyes. We have felt your love deep in our own hearts. We have seen how you loved us in spite of our bad choices. We are humbled by your repeated forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we have seen your goodness to all. We have seen your compassion, not just in our lives, but in the lives of those you have brought to us. Lord Jesus, we have seen the love you have poured out through us to our families, our co-workers and our classmates. It is this love of our classmates at Loma Linda Academy we celebrate today. Lord, the joy we experienced in those years was great, and we thank you for such joy. But Lord, for some of us fellowshipping today, there was pain in those same years. And for some of us, there is still pain. And Lord, for some of our classmates, the pain from those years makes them unable to worship with us today. Jesus, we pray for your healing on all classmates. We pray you compel us to acts of reconciliation. Make us restorers of what was lost. Anoint your speaker today and let your spirit open our hearts and our minds to the power of your love. As we listen, let your spirit reaffirm for us your ordination of each of us as an instrument of your healing and your peace. And now, all glory to you, Jesus, who alone is God, to you who brings us into your presence with love and joy. We give blessing and glory and honor and power forevermore. Amen. Welcome. It's good to be with you today. I had hoped that we could spend time together, but we will make the best of doing it virtually like this. But meeting virtually will allow us to experience today's sermon a little bit differently than we otherwise would have. I've been associated with Loma Linda Academy now for a number of years, well, since the late 1970s. I first came on campus as a kindergartner, uh, pre-first we called it back then. And what I'd like to do with you today is take you through a couple areas on, on campus and share some memories with you. I've titled today's sermon, Eternal Principles, Intelligent Choices. That will ring true or familiar at least with a number of you because it is the school's current motto. And I have chosen for our text today a passage from Paul's letter to the Romans out of Romans 12. Looking at Romans 12 verse 2, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Let's pray together. Our gracious Lord, we thank you for Loma Linda Academy. We thank you for the experiences we've had in this place. And this morning, Lord, as we look at your word and we spend some time together, we ask that you will open our hearts and our minds and bless us with what you would have us to know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Right now, I am standing in my former kindergarten classroom. It was Mrs. Summer's classroom back then. Today, it serves as a high school classroom, Mr. Uribe's Spanish classroom. Now, I learned some eternal principles and intelligent choices here, I'm sure. There's only a couple things I remember about this, um, this classroom because that was a long time ago. I learned that we have worship every morning, and that's a good thing. I learned that it's good to spend time with Jesus. I learned that it's good to have prayer in the morning. 
Now, I, I also learned that it's, it's really fun to make clouds out of cotton balls and a whole lot of glue. And beyond that, I don't have a whole lot of memories of my kindergarten time. But I did at least have that first seed planted of eternal principles, intelligent choices. Now, come with me. I want to take you to a couple other areas on campus. Immediately behind me is the former elementary school, which now serves as the junior high. A lot of firsts for me here. First grade, first fight, second grade, first trip to the principal's office, also in second grade, first stitches in fifth grade. I learned a lot of things here. Unfortunately, I also made some unintelligent choices during my elementary years. I remember when I started first grade, we each got a little placard. It was a laminated piece of paper with our name printed on it by the teacher. My name, Chris Johnston, was printed nicely on there. It was laminated. It was, it was wonderful. Unfortunately, they also gave us all scissors. And the only thing I could find to cut was my, my name. So I started cutting just a little bit off the ends and worked my way back. And by the time the teacher's aide stopped me, I had worked my way completely through my last name. So my learning in first grade primarily consisted of learning how to write my first name. Everyone else knew how to write their whole name, but it took me a little bit longer. Well, then second grade came. And in second grade, I liked to talk and I enjoyed talking especially during math class, because talking seemed a lot more fun and a lot more useful, frankly, than what we were learning in math class. The teacher didn't think so and didn't appreciate my talking, so it was probably after about the 14th or 15th warning, she sent me to the principal's office, and I got to spend time in the principal's office finishing my math book. Well, I must have learned at some point some eternal principles and intelligent choices during my elementary time, because these would become very meaningful to me in the eighth grade, when it was a, a late February afternoon and I was heading home from, from school, but I didn't make it home. Come with me now and let me show you where that happened. Franz Hall used to be located here, the former administration building, and immediately in front of Franz Hall, across Anderson Street, was a crosswalk, a crosswalk I, I took to school and from school every day from kindergarten through eighth grade. And in eighth grade, this February afternoon, late afternoon in eighth grade, as I had done many other days, I was taking that crosswalk home. I got up on my bicycle and pushed the button and started to coast across the street. And as I was coasting across the street, suddenly I heard some screeching tires and I saw just out of my peripheral vision to the right, a kind of blur of maroon. And before I knew what had happened, I'd been hit by a car and found myself laying on my back in the street. I found out later that I had been hit by that car and my bicycle had been punched out from under me. I bounced off the hood, then bounced off the windshield somersaulted over the, the roof and landed right there in the crosswalk, landed hard enough on my shoulder and my head where the yellow paint from the crosswalk transferred onto my shirt. And I remember as I was laying there, actually I remember everything about that day, but I remember as I was laying there, looking up, I could just see the sky and then different faces would pop into my view. And I could hear people talking as if I wasn't there. Is he still alive? How bad is it? Somebody call 911. And finally, there were people kneeling around me. And I remember praying at that point. And I remember my prayer to this day. My prayer was, dear Jesus, please don't let me be hurt too bad. Let's take another look at Romans 12. Come with me. So Romans 12, verse 2 again. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. That to me is the essence of what 
eternal principles, intelligent choices means. Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed. That's the same word, that word conformed, that is used by Peter when he says in 1 Peter 1.14. Talking about being conformed to this world means something negative, being tied to something ignorant. But be transformed, transformed by the knowledge of Jesus, being transformed by an understanding of what it means to follow Jesus is what Paul is talking about here. He's saying, don't be ignorant, don't conform yourself to the world, but be transformed. Obtain knowledge of what it means to follow Jesus. So we're talking about knowledge here. Knowledge is important. Knowledge is one of the reasons we go to schools like this. But what is it that sets apart Loma Linda Academy and the education here from other schools? Well, it is the knowledge of Jesus. That is the difference. And it's not just the knowledge of Jesus. It's what we do with that knowledge. Now, a few years ago, I was invited to spend some time in chapel with our kindergartners through second graders. And they sang the school song. Now, hopefully all of you have had the opportunity now to appreciate and enjoy that school song. And first of all, it's really cute. But second of all, it has a theological principle intertwined in it. In the song, in the school song, it includes a previous iteration of our motto, not eternal principles, intelligent choices, but did you catch it in the song? Where knowledge forms character. Where knowledge forms character. Well, what kind of knowledge? It must be knowledge about the way of Jesus and the character. The character formed by that knowledge then must be what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So let's look and see what Paul says that character might look like. Romans 12, verses 3 through 8 now. Romans 12, 3 through 8, the gifts of grace. Paul says, for by... The grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. And then he goes on to talk about what it means to be part of this body of Christ. Those of you who are familiar with the other writings of Paul will find some similarity here to Paul's first letter to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 12, verses 12 to 28, where Paul expands on this idea of what it means to be members of the body of Christ. In verse 6, he says, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them, right? Let us use them. That's what it means to be part of this body of Christ, to use the gifts that Christ has given to us. And then verses 9 through 21, the last verses of chapter 12 of Romans. The marks of a true Christian. Paul says, let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Paul is telling us this is what it means. This is what it means to follow Jesus. These are the eternal principles. These are the intelligent choices we call on students to make here at Loma Linda Academy. This is what it means to follow Jesus. Verse 10, love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, 
so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what does eternal principles, intelligent choices mean to you? Now, I don't know what your time at Loma Linda Academy was like. And I don't know what your time since Loma Linda Academy has been like. I certainly hope that the seed of eternal principles was planted in you to some extent while you are here. And if it was, I don't know if it took root or how it grew or what has happened since then. But I do know something that is, that is good news. And that is God still speaks to us today. Through this word, through the people he places in our path. Here's the good news. It is never too late to be transformed by Jesus. And here's the last point I want to leave you with today. During my senior year, I was in chapel, and I was asked to inter introduce our guest speaker. He was a pastor, senior pastor at one of the local churches at the Azure Hills Church. First time I had met him, his name was Morris Vinden. And he was coming to speak to a chapel full of high school students. And those of you that have been in high school chapel, you know that we could be a difficult audience for guest speakers. And I introduced him and he stood up and he started talking, holding only his Bible. And he talked in kind of a matter of fact, almost shy, monotone at many times voice. And we were studying as we did in chapel. Some people were talking, but a couple minutes into his sermon, I noticed something. He hadn't changed. He hadn't become more dynamic. He hadn't used some great illustration or started telling a story. But people started listening, and it was silent in chapel. Now, you know when it's silent in Academy Chapel, something good is happening. And I listened to what he had to say. And I went on to listen to a number of other sermons of his after that. In fact, I even bought a little book he had written to know God and read it until it fell apart. And I recall one of his sermons in particular, where he caught my attention by saying, there are four things that God doesn't know. I said, what? But God knows everything. He said, there are four things that God doesn't know. God doesn't know a sin he does not hate. Number two, God doesn't know a sinner he does not love. And number three, God doesn't know a sin he won't forgive. And finally, God doesn't know a better time than now. So I don't know what your life has been like. I don't know the blessings you have received. I don't know the trials you have had. I don't know what your relationship is with Jesus right now, and I don't know what it was then. But I do know this. Jesus is calling each of us to know him. Jesus is calling each of us to make an eternal choice, that intelligent choice, the most intelligent choice of all, to spend eternity with Jesus. There's no better time than right now to make the most intelligent choice of all to spend eternity with Jesus. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the many blessings you have, you have given all of us. We thank you for your guidance, for your love, for the peace you give us. We thank you even though in certain trials we may question where you are. We thank you that you are always there. 
And God, now this morning, today, as we gather in prayer, I pray that although we are separated from each other, you will draw us all together and close to you. Let us feel the warmth of your love in all of our lives. Lord, give us the encouragement and the courage to make that choice today to follow you, to accept the gift of your love, and to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to make you stand in his presence blameless and with great Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we pause and we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to come together as friends, as alumni, as an LLA family. We thank you, Lord, for um, with the things that you have been doing in our school throughout the year. And Lord, now as we head out into spending time together, we pray that you will bless our conversations, our friendships. We thank you for your goodness and your love for us. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.